think what prompted me to make this documentary was my mum is a foster carer and she has been for the last 15 years and me and my sisters we've sort of been part of it so we sort of know how the system works but there's so much about it that I don't know so I just thought this was a perfect match. My mum's first child was a little girl. We had her when she was six months old. And we found her a permanent home when she was four years old. And it was devastating for my mum and my sisters because, you know, we loved her and we missed her, but we knew it was the best thing for her. And my mum had given her the most amazing start in life. And then after my mum's first foster kid, we then got Daniel when he was eight. When we got him, he was in, you know, pretty bad state. He, he couldn't communicate properly couldn't do his shoelaces or brush his teeth or use a knife and fork by himself. So we really had to start from the beginning with Daniel and it's been the most amazing journey. and So satisfying to watch Daniel grow up, learn all his life lessons and his life skills. We're super proud of him. He's the only one of us swashies to go to university. My mum's super proud of him. He's definitely my mum's favourite child out of all of us, but um, we wouldn't have it any other way. We love him. What caught me off guard while making this documentary was the lack of support, the lack of love. I know that when I was growing up and I was of the age of 16 to 18, I was making loads of mistakes. I was getting in loads of trouble, but I knew I had my mum, my nan, my granddad, my, my sisters, my aunties, my uncles. There was always someone there that, that would help me and that was my support net, network. And I think what I got most from meeting these young people is how vulnerable they are. You know, that there's no one there to love them. There's no one there for them to fall back on. If, there's, if they make a mistake, they've got to deal with it themselves. That's the sad thing, you know, is that these kids just want to be loved, and a lot of the time, they're not. I'd go and spend time with these, these young people, and then I'd have to go home to my family, and my kids, and my home. And I just felt a little bit guilty that I, that I was so lucky. I felt a little bit guilty that that I was at home and they were still living their lives not knowing what was going on. So yeah, it was, it, was a real, it was a real tricky journey and hopefully, you know, we can make a change, make, you know, make this a better, a better place for kids that are in care because they're our generation, they're our future, you know. So let's look after them. They might not be our kids biologically, but as a society, we have got an obligation to look after these young people. When I was 11 years old, I lost my dad. Um, and it was just me, my mum and my sisters. And it was really difficult, you know, learning to deal with grief at a young age, trying to get my head around why my dad weren't here, you know, the rest of my life without him, missing him. So I can sort of um, get on the level, but I would never like to say that I totally understand what they're going through because I was so lucky to have it for the 11 years that I did that I know how important it is. And I know the, the hang-ups I had growing up and becoming an adult through not having my dad. So I know that these kids are going to go through the same things. They're going to have to deal with these emotions and not to have a mum or a dad or any support network growing up. That would be so difficult. There's so many things that people don't know about foster care that have not been made public knowledge. You know, you don't have to be a foster carer full time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can dip in and out. You can be a support helper where you meet a foster child every month, once a month, and you go out and do an activity. There's so many things that you can do. There's so many charities as well. I mean, that's the one good thing about our country. When the government fails us, we've always got charities that are going to step in and do the work that the government should be doing. And yeah, just spread the word. Let people know how the system works and how they can help, because everybody can help. I really hope this documentary hits home and has an impact. Any impact will be a good impact. I need to just be the person that highlights a subject and hopefully get people interested. And then, you know, we get enough people interested, the government are gonna have to do something. Me and Stacey have spoke to each other about fostering ourselves. Now we've got a really big family, we've got six kids. So, you know, we've, we've sort of said, if we were gonna foster, we'd have to wait until the kids got to school and then we could give that child the right time, love and attention, you know? But it's something that we're really looking forward to if we do do it. I, I recommend it to anybody. I've seen what it's done for my family, you know? Daniel always says that, you know, my mum and us lot changed his life, but we say to him, you changed our lives. As much joy that we give you, you give us. 
So we should be saying thank you to him. See, it's just the most amazing thing to be able to offer someone. And uh, if me and Stacey get the chance, we'll definitely do it ourselves because I've seen how it works. And um, there are so many kids out there that need a little bit of love. I'd say Stacey's definitely stricter. There's always got to be a good cop and a bad cop. And I'm, I'm the good cop. But um, she doesn't like being the bad cop. That's the problem. She always has a go at me and says, you're making me be the bad parent, the strict parent. And I'm like, yeah. That's, that's exactly how I want it to be, because I'm fun Joe, fun dad. I don't like to tell the kids off, so on the odd occasion where Stacey makes me tell the kids off for something they've done wrong, I'll go back in in five minutes and give them a little bit of chocolate and a kiss and a cuddle and tell them that I'm sorry. Stacey goes mad, so I'm a real soft touch when it comes to my kids. What's next for me? I mean, apart from the, the kids, the nappy changing, which I love, it's a stage that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grow out of eventually. Thank God. Yeah, I want to do some more documentaries. I love my cooking. I want to do some more cooking. Um, I would like to do some, some work involving my fishing. I always like to involve work with my hobbies and my passions and stuff. That's why this was such an amazing opportunity for me because it's such a passion of mine. So yeah, I'm just going to try and do things that I like doing.